shadow of death. Yes, sir. But sometimes mm -hmm. you will find in most cases valleys can be very scary. Right. Oh, yeah. well. Come here, doctor. Yes, sir. Upon your tests that we ran, we found that there is something that is going to kill you. You have a disease, an illness, that we don't have the knowledge nor the medicines to heal you. Are you still with me? But we have to, first of all, realize that that is not the time to be afraid. Though it is a scary situation, but here we find in the text, but look what David said. No matter how rough the valley is, no matter how deep the valley is, you're down but you're not out. No matter how uh, scary it may seem, look what he says. He says, I will fear no evil. Hello, somebody. I want you to understand that in the valley you're going to find some evil. Uh, translated, hurt or harm in the valley. But I'm here to encourage you, don't give up. Don't be afraid, for we know that fear is not something that God has given us. According to 2 Timothy 1 and 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Again, we have to realize we're in the valley. We have to remember the word of the Lord. Because sometimes if you just speak the word of the Lord while you're in your valley, you will find out you next thing you know, you're coming out of the valley. Hello, somebody, are you still with me? Therefore, let us lean on his word and trust that he will. Hello, somebody. He will. Say he will. He will provide for me. Provide for you his divine presence and protection. Again, in the back. Have no fear. Psalm 27 and 1 through 3. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Salvation. Who shall I fear? In case your valley is a person. The Lord is the defense of my life. Who shall I dread? When evil doers take hello, somebody. I want you to know that sometimes when you're in your valley, that there's some evil doers that in the back that is desired to bring you down. But look what look look what the psalmist says. When evil doers came upon me to devour my my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies. They what stumble and fail. Hello, somebody. Though a host encamp against me, my heart will not fear. I'm telling you, you got to know how to deal with fear. And the best way to deal with fear is to put the word of God on fear. Though war arise against me, in spite of this, I shall be confident. Again, fear has no power over the children of God. The Lord is for me. I will not fear. What can a man do to me? Psalm 118 and 6. Sing ye with confidence. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Psalm 56 and 4. In God whose word I praise. See, there's a blessing when you praise the Lord. In God's word and whom I praise. In God I have put my trust. Now, are you willing to put your trust in the Lord? Though you're down, you're not out, but put your trust in the Lord. No matter how bad the news is, put your trust in the Lord. I uh, know I'm telling you from experience, if you would just put your trust in the Lord, I shall not what be afraid. What can a mere man do to me? I'm here to tell you that no man. See, 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 see. Sometimes it's easy for us to get past steam. But we have problems with people. Somebody. But what can he do to you? See, I, I'm just, it just puzzles me sometimes. And I'm not one who have graduated and, and, and has my PhD in going through the valley and worrying about folk. Because see, sometimes our worst valleys is not things, it's people. Uh, uh, but God allowed me to believe and, and to understand, why are you worried about people who can only harm this? Who we should be worrying about and making sure we're walking in line and 
trust in him. It's God who's able to not only destroy this, but the Bible says he's able to send your soul to hell. Oh, it's in the book. So why are we worried about folk? They can only do so much to you. Matter of fact, I come to understand that they can only do to you what would you allow them to do. I learned how to just walk around and pretend like some people are invisible. If they don't mean me no good, then they mean me a lot of harm. Yes. Hello, somebody. Yes. <laughs> Again, folk, got to be careful. I will not fear no evil. And it's a shame to say it, but there are some evil people in this world. But uh, let us not let them infiltrate the church. Uh, the Bible is very clear that in this house, wheat and tear grow. Uh, but we are not to worry about the tear because when Jesus come back, he's going to deal with the tears. Hello, somebody. So again, a nice way of putting it, there are even evil people in the church. No matter how much you love them, no matter how much you do for them, they still have a spirit of evilness. Well, I'm here to encourage you that you are to put away the evil ways. That you are to put your heart and your mind on Jesus. And that God holds us accountable of how we should treat one another, especially those brothers and sisters in the household of faith. See, God will get you about dealing in how you deal with his people, about how you deal with his children. Thank you, Holy Ghost. When we learn how to learn, when we learn how to love others as we love ourselves, we will be just that much further down the road. Fear. Not so much things and situations, but people. We have to be careful, again, not to fall in that category. Let me move on. I might as well put away this. But I see that the Lord has his way in this place. Uh, I will fear no evil. And here's why I will not fear no evil. Not because I pump iron, hello somebody. Not because I got a big bank account. Are you still with me? Not because I know some of the most powerful people in society. Are you still with me? Not enough because I know the president of whatever auxiliary. And because I am just a powerful person. I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. His divine presence in the back. Whatever you're down about, you're not down by yourself. Learn how to say, no matter what's going on, Lord, you are with me. And, and listen here, he says, your rod and your staff, they what? They comfort me. They keep me. They stop me from losing my mind. They stop me from hurting somebody. Hello, somebody. Thy rod and thy staff, they keep me. See, the, 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 the shepherd's rod was used to protect but it also learned, we know here, it is used to also give to us peace. It is also used to give us comfort in the valleys of life. Hello. Amen. So that means, hearing all of this, no matter how far down I am, I'm never out because God is with me. Even until the end of time, no matter what the doctor says, no matter what anybody says, no matter what death says, I am not by myself. He will comfort me and keep me. But you got to know how to use the rod and the staff. And the rod and the staff is this, the book of the book of life. The Holy Bible. You got to be able to remember that I own a hill <laughs> on the outskirts of the city. There was a man that seen that he was down. But I'm here to tell you, he wasn't out. They marched him from Judgment Hall to Judgment Hall. They pronounced guilty upon him, though he had never did a thing. See, I don't know about you, I've been down, but some of the times, and most of the times, I was down because of my own doing. But Jesus, being the only Lamb of God, but found himself on Judgment Hall to Judgment Hall. He was down, but he wasn't down. Then they took him and they beat him all night long. It seemed like he was down, but he wasn't down. Then they took and put an old rugged cross. And they beat him down, beat him beyond recognition. And marched him up the Ville de la Rosa. Oh, somebody that came a time when he was walking. Up the Ville de la Rosa. He got a little rough. Oh, somebody when he was walking up the Ville de la Rosa. That when he, when he walked up the Ville de la Rosa. Oh, somebody that even when he fell, he was down. But he wasn't out because even God sent for him, Simon the Syrian, to help him bear his cross. Hello, somebody must, uh, must be denied. 
But he marched on up the Bill Bellarosa to the hill shaped like a man in school. Oh, somebody, that is the worst place you want to find yourself in that time. They hung him high, stretched him wide, they put nails in his feet, put nails in his hands, they stabbed him in the side, blood came running out, water came running out, it seemed like he was down, but he wasn't now. How I know this is because while he seemed though he was down, he saved one of the sinners that was hunting next to him. Oh, somebody, see that's how we need to understand how we should travel and how we should behave in the battle. We got to be willing to put our valley aside and help somebody else. The Bible says that he hung his head in the hollow of the shoulder. Oh, somebody, I'm happy now. He hung 